Hello, and welcome to Five Things. I'm Dana Taylor. The first Grammy Award for Hip Hop Best Rap Performance was won by DJ Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince for their song, Parents Just Don't Understand. But they, along with other hip-hop artists, boycotted the Grammys because the rap category was not televised. That was in 1989. Fast forward 10 years to 1999, and Lauryn Hill's solo debut, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, became the first hip-hop album to win the Grammy for Album of the Year. Over the course of 50 years, the cultural reach of hip-hop has traveled a winding road that now places it front and center in American pop culture. Here to discuss the 50th anniversary of hip-hop is Kiana Fitzgerald, a journalist, cultural critic, and DJ. Her new book, Ode to Hip-Hop, 50 Albums That Define 50 Years of Trailblazing Music, is on bookshelves now. Kiana, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So like other influential cultural movements, hip hop is not without controversy, despite backlashes to explicit lyrics, sexism, violence, the genre has endured. What do non hip hop fans not understand about the music? This genre was birthed from a need for change. There was a lot of cultural and societal ills that were affecting the birthplace of hip hop, which is the Bronx, New York. And out of that kind of, you know, strife and struggle came this beautiful creation. So I think non-hip hop fans would really do well to just understand that this is a genre that has always been in place in order to help people to propel themselves forward. So take us back to the Bronx and the early days of hip hop. What were some of those factors in the creation? And tell us about the man who is credited with creating it. So DJ Cool Herc a Jamaican American artist is known as the father of hip hop. And the reason why he is, is because he threw a party on August 11th, 1973 on 1520 Sedgwick Avenue. It was only a party that held about 40 to 50 people, but it has become the stuff of legend. So at that party, it was just cool Herc spinning his records and really emphasizing the break, which is an, an element in a song where the percussion is the main focus and it just allows B-boys and B-girls to have a good time. So that's really where hip hop started to take form and to cultivate and become the beginnings of what we know it as today. The role of women in hip hop has evolved over the past 50 years. Women had to push their way into a musical genre that was unwelcoming and rife with misogyny. How have female rappers contributed to the development of hip hop music? Female rappers have been around since the very beginning, from an MC Shaw Rock to MC Light to Salt and Pepper. They've always been present. They've always been active, but they haven't always been given the space to really blossom and grow in the way that they could have. And I think as time has progressed, we've kind of opened that door a little bit wider. So women, non-binary, femme, queer artists are able to kind of rush through and become a part of this culture because they contributed to it as well as listeners, as fans as buyers of the music, any way you want to put it, everybody has been a part of this genre since the beginning. And I think we're finally getting to a point with artists like, you know, Megan Thee Stallion, like Cardi B, like newer artists of such as Lola Brooke and Maya the Dawn, um, who all um, those artists are from New York, but, you know, we have artists in the South, the West Coast, the, the middle of the country, across the world. There are so many new artists who are coming into the fold. And I think as time progresses, we will see more and more different kinds of people come into it. Well, the musical Hamilton has recognizable beats and hooks from hip hop, really celebrating an ingredient of the genre, which is sampling. How have hip hop artists dealt with the legal issues surrounding the use of music sampling? Sampling in general has always been a deep part of hip hop. And there are artists, you know, from Big Crit to an artist named Space Ghost Perp from Florida, These artists are very invested in using samples in their music. And I think the way that they're able to kind of push it forward is that they're able to kind of flip it in a way that you couldn't immediately recognize. And I think that's kind of a way that artists are able to not get around the legality of sampling, but to just be more creative about it. What will the next 50 years of hip hop sound like? Will AI bring a different type of sampling? What have the conversations about that been like? So AI is frightening a lot of people, a lot of industries in terms of folks feeling like, you know, is this going to take my job? Is this going to 
profit off of my creativity, et cetera. And I feel like hip hop has already kind of started to see those kinds of um, elements come into play. It's especially with, um, I've seen just on social media that people are playing around with like Drake and Kendrick and other artists that are very well known and using their voices and, you know, putting them in <laughs> songs that don't even exist and people being like, wait, wait a minute, is this real? Is this not real? So the future of hip hop, I feel, will be very, um, very much defined by how much we allow those kinds of factors to infiltrate the creativity of the genre. I hope that if they do become a part of it, that they're used smartly and creatively and not just lazily and as a cheat code. Um, you know, it can be useful, but I think that we have to be really thoughtful about it. Well, suffice it to say, the list of hip hop songs that are noted for their significant social commentary is long. I do want to touch on a couple of them, though, and I'll start with Tupac Shakur's 1991 song, Brenda's Got a Baby, which was a fictionalized, um, in part fictionalized version of a story, true story, of a 12 year old girl who was raped, gave birth, and threw her baby away. But what was the even bigger cultural issue that was being highlighted there? I think hip hop has always been a mirror for our culture and our society. And in artists like Tupac, artists like a Kendrick Lamar, um, or even a J. Cole, I think that those kinds of musicians are able to look inward at their own communities, at their own lives and experiences, or the lives of the people in their own lives. They're able to look at all of these perspectives and really angle in and say, this is what's going on in my community. What's going on in yours? How do we relate? How do we not relate? And how can we come together? And Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five song, The Message, released in 1982. That's one of the most influential songs of all time. It's been archived by the Library of Congress. What do you see as the lyrical significance of that song? That song really is one of, I would say, the top five most important songs in hip hop history it really gave um, the successors of this genre or the successors of, you know, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five an opportunity to see that, you know, hip hop could be more than just like park jams and parties and, you know, street um, celebrations. It could be something that we could talk about serious issues and we can really pull our, our folks in and say, this is what's going on. We need to handle it. How can we handle it together again as a community? Because hip hop is very much a community based product. It's an art form that is very, very dependent on the people within it and the people who are consuming it. So with songs like The Message, I think that it really just gave a lot of artists and a lot of listeners permission to talk about real issues. And knowing that we can't get to all of them in terms of social commentary, whether it's a song or an artist, what comes first to mind for you? Mm. I would say um, the first thing that I thought of was the Ghetto Boys, Mind Playing Tricks on Me. Um, it's a single from 1991. I was born in 89, so I was very young when it came out and I still remember it very vividly, like hearing it in car rides with my mom and my family. And that song really, that was her favorite song actually. And I didn't understand it then, but now I do because I have my own mental health issues. I live with bipolar type one. And in listening to that song now, I'm like, wow, I can understand. I can relate to what they're going through. And I think that's a really important part of hip hop is being able to give people an opportunity to relate to you. One of the most talked about women in hip hop was not an artist. In the 1980s, former second lady Tipper Gore and the PMRC or Parents Music Resource Committee led a successful campaign to put explicit warning labels on music. The group had a list called the Filthy 15 that included songs from artists like Prince, Madonna, Twisted Sister, and ACDC. There weren't any hip hop songs listed, but hip hop as a whole was a huge part of that conversation, of course. So looking back, what effect did it explicit labeling have on hip hop music and the music industry overall? I think it gave hip hoppers an opportunity to be free. And by that, I mean, before, you know, they were able to kind of create in this amorphous space and not really know who's listening, who's being affected, who's being impacted. And with that label, I think it's now, you know, it's up to parents to really dictate what their kids are, are or are not listening to. But when it comes to adults, it's like, I know what I'm getting myself into. This is going to be a journey that is, you know, not clean cut and, you know, beautiful and 
wrapped up in a pretty little bow, it may have some, you know, some language that is a bit particular. So with that label, I do think in its own way, it may have restricted some artists, but I also think it gave them some some uh, room for creativity. Hip hop now transcends borders. How is it adapted to different cultures globally while maintaining its authenticity? From the very beginning, hip hop has been uh, a genre that is to be explored and to be experienced by everybody. It's not just for New Yorkers or for West Coasters or even for Southerners, it's for everybody. And, and seeing how much it's evolved and transformed over the past 50 years, I can only imagine like how many artists are gonna come into the fold um, and from other countries and other regions. Like for example, we have Central C, um, who's a, a UK rapper and he just did a, a freestyle on this program called On the Radar with Drake and everybody was losing their minds. They were like, I can't believe he linked up with Drake. So it's like, these artists are starting to already come into the picture and I can't wait to see where it goes next. And hip hop is also a visual medium, particularly in terms of fashion. What have been some of the most iconic fashion trends that originated in hip hop and impacted pop culture? I absolutely have to talk about Lil' Kim. I feel like she is just an incredible example of how you can express yourself creatively and impact others in the process. From her wigs, you know, from the colorful wig or the Chanel, uh, anything like that to her wardrobe. And also Missy Elliott, I feel like she's someone that had a very, very big impact on the fashion and, and um, cultural aspect of the genre. Um, I'm thinking about The Rain, Super Duper Fly, that music video um, where she's wearing the inflatable leather <laughs> jumpsuit thing that looks like a trash bag. But it's um, you know one of the most iconic visual experiences that most people have ever seen when it comes to music videos. So yeah, those are two examples that I would give. And then hip hop and Hollywood have also come together from Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing to Boys in the Hood and in more recent years, even animated films like the Lego movie. The genre's music, language, fashion, and dance moves are all mainstream. Do you see that as a positive, a negative, or both? Mm, I'm going to weigh in and say both. I believe that it's been a beautiful experience to see how hip hop has been able to really insert itself into so many facets of our culture. But then when we see um, when we see things happen where these artists and these um, you know creatives are not credited for the things that they've done, I think that's where it becomes really tricky. I believe that there is always room to share and to be immersed in this culture. But when it comes to just stealing and taking and not giving credit, appropriation, in other words, that's where it gets a little hairy. Kiana Fitzgerald, thanks so much for talking hip hop with me. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.